happy to be here this morning. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. If you're joining us online, we just praising God for a few seconds. We just giving him some worship this morning. There's no greater thing that we can do than to give God praise. Hallelujah. We worship your Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. He's a God that sits on a high throne. He has no rivals. He's an omnipotent God, an all-knowing God. He's an amazing God. God, we give you glory this morning. Father, we worship you this morning. Hey, wonderful Savior that you are. Wonderful Savior that you are. My God, my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Well, there we go. I'm going to just start it right there, uh, Pastor Patterson. Can you all just join in with me and sing this congregational song with me? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before heaven and earth adore. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Here's another one. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord. Right, I'm turning it back over to the minister of music. Come on and lift your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Come on and let's give God the glory. Let's give God the honor and the praise. Come on and let's lift him up. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. Come on and let's praise him. Come on and let's magnify the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you for your many wonderful blessings. 
we thank you for all that you've done, Lord. All that you're going to do. Lord, have your way, Lord Jesus. Look on us today, Lord. Send your anointing in this place. In the name of Jesus, send your healing power, God. Heal in your name, Lord. Do it for your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus, look on our bishop, oh God. Bless him, oh God. Give him strength, oh God. Oh God, anoint for the service today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, have your way, Lord Jesus. Oh God, look on the sick among us, Lord. Touch in your name, oh God. Heal in your name, oh God. Send your deliverance, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor, Lord Jesus. We'll give you the praise, oh God. You're worthy of the praise, God. You're worthy of the honor, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh God, look on us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. Help us to stand up, God, and be all that you would have us to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Save, oh God. Anoint your word today as it goes out, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give somebody a mind to say, what must I do to be saved, oh God? In the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you. We give you the glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, look on us. Oh, strengthen us. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Psalm of Covering, Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Let's read this Psalm of Covering together. Amen. Amen. One people under one God. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him 
and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Receive the blessing from the Lord. Receive it. Amen.
hurt me. He's right there for me. I've had some rough times in my life. I know in the Lord I have eternal life. Though cares may burden me, He's right there for me. I've had some rough times in my life. I know in the Lord I have eternal life. Though who cares may burden me, He's right there for me. I've had some rough times in my life. I know in the Lord I have eternal life. Though who cares may burden me he's right there for me oh yeah 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 he cares he cares I know that the Lord he cares for you problem I know that the Lord will see you through yes whatever the problem I know that the Lord he's gonna see you through yeah I know that he will Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that the Lord will see you through, oh, yeah, I know that the Lord I know that the Lord, He's got the answer. I know He'll make a way. I know. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Oh, yes, He will. He will fix it today. Trouble on your job. Trouble in your home. I know, I know, I know. God's got the answer. Oh, yeah. I know that he will. Oh, yes, he will. I know that he will. I know God will fix it. He's got, he's got it. He's got the answer. I know that he will. I know he'll see you through.
blessing problem he didn't say it had to be a big problem it can be a little problem whatever the problem God will bring you through huh. ah, ah. Huh. That's, a, that's a good to know thank you choir <laughs> these, these preachers are on fire somebody just get on your feet stand on your feet take about 10 seconds get it all out you watching online wherever you are get it on out worship God worship him hey been good to somebody. Hallelujah. And that's why we're here. That's why we come. That's why we come here to give them praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> ah, I feel his presence. I feel his presence in the house. Sister Austin, do you feel his presence this morning? Hallelujah. He's been good to you. He's been good to you, First Lady. Hallelujah. My God. Glory. Hmm. Amen. 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 Glory to his name. Well, it's the first Sunday of the month, and we come to remember the sacrifice that God sent his son. We remember the sacrifice that his son Jesus made on the cross. So we're going to have communion today. But before that, anybody come to hear the word of the Lord this morning? Amen. amen, amen. Amen. From what I understand, our pastor was in rare form last Sunday afternoon. And uh, he's been talking about from Psalm 23. And a uh, simple psalm, but good nuggets that we can glean from that. And he's with us again today, so I'm excited to hear the word. Uh, before he comes, our choir is going to come one more time with the sermonic selection. After they come, I want you to stand to your feet wherever you are and welcome to this pulpit our own pastor, the prelate of Fifth Illinois Jewish Diction East and the pastor of St. Luke Church of God in Christ, our own Bishop James Curtis Austin Sr.
Lord Jesus, we love you. We praise you and magnify you and honor you and adore you. We extol you and esteem you infinitely above all others because you're God. There's nobody like you, nobody beside you in all the earth. It is you who have made us and not we ourselves. We're your people, the sheep of your pasture. So we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We thank you and bless your name because you are so good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endures to all generations. And Lord, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that you have your way. Minister to our souls. Meet every need. Grant every request. God, let millions of people be blessed through the delivery of your word. Oh, God, penetrate every heart. Every person who's watching on YouTube and Facebook and Lord, however they're tuned in, just ask that you be exalted and glorified. Magnify yourself in their lives. Meet every need, oh God. And we'll love you, we'll praise you, magnify you forever. Thank you one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Amen and amen. While we're standing, would you take hold of your textbook? And I want you to open it to St. John, the ninth chapter, verses 9 through 14. St. John 10, 10th chapter, verses 9 through 14. God bless every one of you. So good to see you here on the Lord's Day. Yes. And uh, we're just delighted to have all of the Thousands and thousands of people. You know I speak by faith, don't you? Yeah, thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are tuned in to us uh, live stream. Because uh, I'm, I'm told that even after this service is over, people in various parts of the world can still tune in and, uh, and pick up uh, this service. And so uh, I speak by faith that this is just going to go viral. Amen. Yeah, I speak it by faith. That the Lord is going to just cause his word to spread in the hearts and minds of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. We're believing God. Amen. God bless. God bless every one of you. Uh, we're ready to get right into the word of God. Verse number 9 through 14. Can you begin reading? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he's an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. What is our subject today? Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Lord, quicken your word and give us understanding, and we'll love you and praise you forever. Thank God. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Last Sunday, my subject was Everybody Needs a Shepherd. Yes. Taken from Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse number 36. Oh, how desperately we need a shepherd. Take note of the current news. Uh, over 310 violent deaths in Chicago uh, just in the first seven months of uh, this year. Uh, over 1,255 shootings in Chicago in the first seven months of this year in Chicago, in Chicago. Lord have mercy. Uh, two men standing in a parking lot in the South Loop. They're just standing in there talking, you know, three o'clock in the morning, they're just talking. 
Somebody comes by and shoots them. One dies, one is wounded. There's a man uh, at, at, my, at my CTA stop, 79th and Dan Ryan. Lord have mercy on a CTA train. Someone shoots him and kills him. Oh, how desperately we need a shepherd. Uh, there's a security guard right here at Clark and Division, the jewel store, the security guard. He's protecting the store, and somebody comes up and with a hammer, pew, attacks him. Lord have mercy. We so desperately need our shepherd. So the question is, what are we going to do? Uh, how will we function in this mean and cruel world? Proverbs, the 22nd chapter and the 13th verse the slothful man said, there's a lion out there. I'll be slain in the streets. I ain't going out there. Proverbs, the 26th chapter, the 13th verse, both of those chapters, 22nd chapter and 26, and the same verse, 13. The slothful man says, there's a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. I ain't going out there. Yeah. And so he folds his hand. And of course, the person who folds his hand and is at home, sheltered in, yet has to eat. Got to eat. Either you got to go out and get the food or somebody's got to bring it to you, but you got to eat. What are we going to do? Are we going to just stay sheltered forever because we hear that there's something out there in the streets? Now, we're not telling you to do anything foolish, to overly expose yourself unnecessarily. If you don't have to be out at midnight, don't go out at midnight. That is just not a good time to go out. And yet, as a Minister of Jesus Christ and a pastor, I get phone calls in the middle of the night. Sometimes I've had to jump out of the bed, get my clothes on, and I had to go out at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning because one of my members was in distress. I've had to do that. And, and I go out by myself in the dark and I take the Lord along with me. You get, you get it? You, get, uh, you better believe I, before I walk out of my house, I don't think I miss a time when I just bend my knee because the Bible says just simply acknowledge the Lord. Just acknowledge him and he'll direct your steps. And so I don't know if there's a time that I leave the church or I leave the house that I don't just bend my knee and say, Lord, cover me with your feathers. Cover me. Cover me, Lord. Yeah. I ask for his covering because I don't know what I'm going to meet, who I'm going to see, what's going to happen. And then when I do get to the hospital, they don't have a spot reserved for the bishop. You get me? I may have to park down the street, wherever I have to park, and then by myself, I don't have my adjutant with me. You know, I still have not, I have not gotten comfortable yet and they're going to have to make me comfortable with this. They have to make me comfortable. Because I don't know how to call somebody in the middle of the night. Say, meet me over at such and such a place. I'm getting out of the bed. You get out of the bed. Huh? <laughs> I just haven't gotten to that point where, you know, I'm waiting on one of these preachers to say, Pastor, I don't care what minute, hour it is. I'm waiting on that. I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. I don't feel like I'm twisting somebody's arm to do that. Yeah. I'll just go by myself with the Lord if I have to. But, but as I get a little bit older, you know, it's kind of nice to have somebody who meets me, you know. But, but, but the, you know, I think I tried it once or twice and, and I got a... Uh, uh, as soon as I get that... Uh, 
the hesitation, that's it. I'm through. You look, go, go back to sleep. Don't worry. Oh, Pastor, I would, but no, 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 no. no. Go, go on back to sleep. I got I to gotta keep rolling. I got to keep rolling. Because my position calls for me to, to go see about the sheep if they are in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, by the way, is when they need you the most. That's when they are overly exposed to the predators and and they're baba they're crying for help and the enemy is approaching oh they're getting ready to have some sheep shanks tonight lord have mercy and so they 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 need they need uh, and so i have to really trust in the lord all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to trust the Lord all the time. I don't know. I don't know what evil forces are out there and let the lion be out on the street. The lion represents a predator. It represents those persons with an evil intent to harm you. Let them be right there. And yet I have to be one who's got my complete trust in the Lord. And I got to go. Yes, I got to go. Do I hear some here? Am I? Send me. Y'all just talking. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> because when he sends you, it's not necessarily convenient. Are you with me? It's not at a time when, uh, when you get around to it. You know, it's going to have to be, Lord, here I am. I'm totally yielded to you at whatever hour of the day or night that you need me, I'm surrendered to you. Amen. I really want to get you to that point. I want to get you to that point where you are totally yielded to the Lord. Everybody needs a personal shepherd. Everybody needs one. And everybody needs uh, this personal relationship with the shepherd. One of the things that I want to drive home is that relationship is far more valuable than <clears throat> religion. But I am not anti-religion folk. I am pro-religion. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Pure religion is important to God. But more important than religion is a relationship. Religion is like the tongue in my shoe. The tongue came with the shoe. And so the religion comes with the relationship. Yeah, yeah. Is that making sense to anybody? Yeah. So get a right relationship with the Lord and automatically you're going to get good religion. Yeah. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, 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 Lord. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got good religion. But I haven't quite gotten my song together. Have you got good relationship? <laughs> haven't got, haven't got my, my tune together on that one yet. But, uh, uh, but the relationship is greater than the religion itself. Everybody needs to be proud of this relationship and declare boldly that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Now, what I want to do is, is somehow marry St. John, the 10th chapter, and Psalm 23. If I can somehow bridge those uh, together so that you get a clear understanding of what a good shepherd is. That when I say the Lord is my shepherd, I really could add a, an adjective to that and not alter the word at all. The Lord is my shepherd good shepherd. When I marry 
St. John 10 with Psalm 23, the Lord is not just a shepherd, but he's my good shepherd. Anybody got a good shepherd here? Is he your good shepherd? Your shepherd gives you bragging rights. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my master, my owner, my supervisor, my manager. He is such a good shepherd that I want for nothing. I am alive and well. Uh, my sight is limited and I cannot see all around me. Neither can I see far down the road. But my shepherd is my seer. He watches out for me. Yes, the Lord is my good shepherd. Uh, notice the 23rd Psalm that my good shepherd has me on a journey. Yeah, yeah, he has me on a journey. And, and I'm constantly moving. And I'm constantly uh, going somewhere. I'm constantly headed somewhere that I don't even know where I'm going. I don't know in advance where I'm headed. All I know is I'm following uh, the shepherd. He leads me to some green pastures where he makes me to lie down and take a rest break. The green pastures is for rest. You do feed off of the green grass, but the green pasture is primarily to take a break because you cannot overrun the sheep. You can't just keep driving them to keep going without rest. They will become exhausted, exasperated. They'll just lose all their strength and energy. They'll just die. You, know, you can't do that. You can't overdrive uh, the sheep. So he makes me lie down in green pastures. He, then he leads me beside still waters so that I can have a little something to drink. Everybody needs to be hydrated. That's the reason we give away water at this church. At this church, uh, we have shut down the fountain. We no longer, yeah, we have the water fountain, but no water coming out of it. We have shut down the water fountain in times like these. What happened two and a half years ago? Pandemic, right? And so we shut down the fountain. But we keep bottles of water. I don't know how many thousands of bottles we have bought since pandemic, but it's been a lot of bottles that we keep available so that everybody, when you come in, you don't have to leave a tip even. We just want you to leave a tithe. <laughs> we'll take a tithe any day over a tip, huh? Oh, honey, you can have the bottle. The bottle is free. Uh, uh, but they're passing out envelopes once you get in the church. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, 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 folk, no, really, really, uh, everybody needs water. Water is something that your whole system does not operate properly without water. By the way, you'd be surprised to know how much of you is made up of water. Yeah, water is so absolutely necessary. So he leads us beside the still waters so that we can have a chance to refresh ourselves and be restored. Because after walking long distance in a desert, finally to see water, oh, oh how refreshing that is. It literally restores energy. Amen. Then he leads us in the paths of righteousness. We know that even though uh, we can't see whether this is I-57 or is it I-88, we don't know if it's I-90 or 94. We, there are no signs out here, but the shepherd is leading us in paths that we know are right, that these paths are right for us as his flock. Then he's guiding us in a right path. The Lord knows the way that I take. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that good news? Uh, he leads us in paths of righteousness, not for our sake, but for his sake, his name's sake. He, he does this for his honor and for his He takes pleasure in leading you and guiding you 
in right paths. Isn't that great? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but this is not all going to be green grass, huh? My little sweet sister in the back. So good to see y'all sisters. God bless you. Uh, but sometimes he's going to take you down in the valley. No, no, nobody likes going down. I, I want to go up, you know. Yeah, but the shepherd says, you know, we need to get down in the valley. And as we go down in the valley, the path that takes us down in the valley, as long as you know that it's the right path, it's going to be surrounded with enemies. Enemy forces, predators, adversaries, people who don't like you, people who want to tear you up. They want to wound you. They want to destroy you. They're going to be lined up all along the way as you go down to the valley. By the way, we don't like valleys, and we always talk negative about valleys, but sometimes the most plush area is down in that because it collects the water. The water flows shh, down into the valley. And so there is something good down in the valley. But just like it's good for you, it's good for the enemy too. Are you with me? Yeah, when, when my wife and I went to Alaska, and there in Anchorage, Alaska, uh, my cousins, I have cousins who live, have for years lived in Alaska. You know how guys go to military and, they, and, and once they are stationed in a certain place, after a while they fall in love with it and they just sort of, sort of stay. So my cousins, I got cousins, picked us up, took us to a little distance away from downtown Anchorage, took us you know, on a drive so that we went to another big lake. And there... We were watching the salmon. Oh, what did I tell you about salmon? What do they do? They, they flow upstream while the current is going down. They're just shoo, going. Right, right. Outside of our hotel in Anchorage, uh, 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 Alaska, there is a nice big stream where the salmon are doing the same thing. So we didn't have to go far away to see that. But my cousins took us to another lake so that we could see sort of the same thing, a rushing river, and the salmon are just going. And so people are out there fishing. Salmon in abundance. You're sure to catch a fish. You can see them with your own eyes. There they are. You know, they're just leaping and moving. But just like the fishermen like salmon, the bears like salmon. I saw with my own eyes, Sister Lynette, with my own eyes, a bear across on the other side of the lake, because we were on this side of the, of the lake, and the bear was on that side of the lake, and he was coming down to get him a fish or two. I said, it's time for us to go. Whoa, wait a minute. This ain't no zoo. I mean, I saw with my own eyes the bear on his own floor just walking down. And, and, and nobody's screaming and yelling. Nobody's trying to yell at the bear. I'm told that people, when they see the bear, they just move out of the way. Give him his space. And he's going to get salmon, not human flesh. But if you get in his way, you will be dinner tonight. Are you with me? Oh, Lord. What I'm trying to tell you is that when things are the best, like, who was that? Uh, Lot? Was that Lot? Was that the nephew uh, of Abraham? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he saw Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, well watered, oh my, down in the valley, down towards the deep sea, oh. He said, that's where I want to go. He didn't know that the same plush ground you want to go, the enemy wants to go too. And so, he, but, but, but the difference is, is that we have a shepherd who guides us. 
guides us down into the valley, right in the presence of our enemies. Oh, that's the reason it's called Death Valley. The shadow, the shadow of death, the valley of the shadow of death. But I will fear no evil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk straight to him now because you, Lord, are with me. You're with me. Uh, because I, and I'm also noticing, I don't see very good, but I see that you got a rod in one hand and a staff in the other. And so uh, that rod is, is to comfort me, to let me know that anything that comes against me, you're standing there to defend me. A shepherd defends the flock. Isn't that good news? And if by some chance I get distracted and I wander a little bit off course, I want to thank you for your staff with a hook on it that so you can go, come on back now. Get on back in the right path. Now, I know all you people looking at me, look, y'all just look like little holy angels just sitting all around me. But there's got to be somebody here who has experienced in 2022 the enemy coming into your flesh and your mind trying to get you off track. Tempted to go off track. And then the word of the Lord comes like a hook and hooks you back in to the right path. Yeah, yeah. Because all we like sheep have gone astray. Every man to his own way. We all got our own way. What tempts you may not tempt me. But what tempts me may not tempt you. Everybody's got his own way. One of my big sisters says, oh, Jimmy, pray for my girlfriends. They just, oh, they just going through. I says, all right, I'm going to pray for them. God, in the name of Jesus, help them. A year later, she says, Jimmy, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just not your season yet. Maybe right now you got it going good, but next year, oh. You don't even know why you feel like you feel and why you want to do what you want to do. You know, there's no explanation for it other than the enemy is coming in like a flood. And that's where we need the Holy Spirit to lift up a standard against them. The rod and the staff, they comfort me. But on the other side, notice later I walk through the valley because on the other side of the valley is a steep incline. On this side of the valley is a decline that takes us down into the valley, but we're not going there to stay. Somebody, somebody declared to somebody, the valley is not my permanent address. I'm not going down there to stay. I'm going through the valley. I'm going to pick up whatever I need to pick up to strengthen me to get up the next hill. Yes, I, I'm going through that valley to get whatever experiences I need to get that will fortify me and give me the confidence that I need when I get back up the hill. I'm going through the valley. And I'm coming up on the other side. When I come up on the other side, I'm going to land on what's called a table land. A table land. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm trying to tell you that the Lord has me on a journey, that he's moving me, moving me from one experience to the next experience, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. There I am on the table land. But you know, while I'm up there on the table land, I look back towards the valley and see all those haters all those predators that wanted to eat me up that had that mean look on their face like they 
oh, wanted to tear into me, but couldn't do it. They couldn't touch me because my shepherd was there as my defense. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. My enemies are watching me eat well. They're watching me taking care of. They're watching. They're watching me excel. They're watching me not just going through, but go going over. <laughs> I'll pass a table before me in the presence of my enemy. This is my table land experience. And then thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Now you're going to have to see me on Wednesday night because I cannot get into that oil. That oil is so important. We're just so used to olive oil to anoint somebody with, uh, on their head to pray for them so that they get well. But let me tell you there's power in the oil. You know what? I just, I just got a revelation. Everybody next, next, next Sunday, next Sunday, why don't you, uh, uh, by next Sunday, uh, get you a, a bottle of oil, whether you buy it or you bring it from home. <sighs> yeah, I've, 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 I've had big cans. <laughs> People have brought me big cans of olive oil to bless. I'll, I'll bless whatever you bring me. I'll bless whatever you bring. But next Sunday is going to be Orly Sunday. So I'm not going to get into all of the uses of the oil, but that oil for the sheep oh, is most precious. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Brother Keith, all I want to say, did I get that name right? I, I, all I want to say, kid, you guys are all these masses. I got to figure out who you are. <laughs> all I want to say is that his picture is so much bigger than your cup. His picture is so much bigger than your cup. That's when your cup runs over because he's steadily pouring. <laughs> Lord, please, Lord, give me a blessing. He says, I'll, I'll give you more than a blessing. <laughs> I'll make your cup run over. I will make your cup run over. You ought to encourage somebody and tell them, God's got an overflowing cup for you. That's because his picture is so much bigger than your cup. Turn, anoints my head with all my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And guess where I'm going to end up? Guess where I will end up? In the house of the Lord forever. I'm trying to tell you that the Lord is taking me some way. And I'm going to end up in his presence forever. And there I will not worry about adversaries or demons or devils or nothing else. Hallelujah. Nothing that defiles is going to get up in there. So our text today as I come to a close reveals Jesus as the good shepherd. So that we can boldly say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I, again, I say unto you, I want you to meet me on Wednesday night because I want to get into that I shall not want on Wednesday night. Because I know you're sitting here saying, okay, 
I'm not supposed to want. Well, why am I wanting? So I, I, I want to get into that on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. I want you to meet me here, or at least be on, online, because uh, I, I have some questions. I said, you know, what about Job? Uh, I could name a bunch of folk. What about some of the folk that uh, are yet struggling with a long-term illness? What about people who have had a disability for a long time, maybe even from birth? How do they say they shall not want? I just saw on TV the other day, some of you may have seen it, a guy who was born without arms and without legs. He was born that way. He survived. He seems to be smiling and happy. Somehow the Lord has provided. But how does he say, I shall not want? Uh, how do you say, I shall not want, when you're having a bad relationship? Y'all got to meet me on Wednesday night. You're going to have me preaching ahead of time. And you just got to meet me on Wednesday night. So we can just talk about what it really means by I shall not want. I'm telling you, you're going to get so much comfort out of the word of God. It, the word of God comes to give us comfort. It is a word of comfort and strength to support us when we're going through some difficult times. And so St. John, the 10th chapter, makes several statements about the good shepherd that are not made for just any old body. Uh, uh, first of all, the good shepherd is the one who enters by the door. He's not trying to sneak his way in. No, he boldly walks in with his sheep. He has authority. I think I told you about my, uh, <clears throat> my wife and I. We were so blessed by one of James Jr.'s friends who went to the church that he was going to there in New Jersey. But he worked uh, uh, for the National uh, security and, 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 and took us in, into the place where norm, the average person cannot go unless you have uh, authority. He took us in, used his badge, and says, I've got two, three guests, because Marcus was with us. I got three guests. Come on through. Took us to another checkpoint. Showed his badge. I've got three guests. Come on through. I like that. Huh. <laughs> and so that's my shepherd. I, have, I don't have the badge. I, I don't have the authority. But he has the authority. And he walks us through. Oh, I felt that. He walks us through doors that we otherwise could never go through. My shepherd gets us in places that we ordinarily could not get into. He goes through the door, takes his sheep with him. Yeah. And the porter at the gate just opens the door for him because he's got the authority. I'm, I'm in the 10th chapter of St. John now. I told you I was marrying those two. And the sheep are following the shepherd not based on what they see, but based on what they hear. In every case, the shepherd's voice is critical. Uh, the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And so he has a voice command. A voice command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the sheep are trained to follow the voice. Somebody says, well, why don't they just you know, look up and see him and just follow him what they see? You don't see well in the dark. So he trains them in the daytime to follow my voice so that when it's nighttime, when it's hard to see that wolf that's coming to destroy. 
But when the shepherd senses that there is a wolf invading the flock, the shepherd can speak to his sheep and his sheep know his voice and they follow his voice. And so even though he's leading them in the dark, they're following what they cannot see but what they can hear. They hear his voice and he keeps talking to them as he moves them forward. The wolf is not one of his sheep. The wolf does not know sheep language. The wolf does not know the voice of a shepherd because a shepherd is not his shepherd. The shepherd is a sheep's shepherd. Are you with me? And so when the shepherd can detect that a wolf has invaded and has slipped in and is trying to divide the sheep because he knows, the wolf knows that if he can get the sheep divided, that he can have dinner tonight. Yeah, he's just trying to get the sheep separated from the fold. That's the reason I don't like that word backsliding, folk. I let you have that word. That word is not even in my vocabulary other than for you. I use it just for y'all. Power. Will you show sure enough need his power? Oh, my God. We are led by his voice. Mm. He put it forth his own sheep. He goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his what? Voice. Lord have mercy, I'm going to have to stop. And a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. And then Jesus says, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. So you might as well get ready. I've got some sheep that you don't know about and they may not even look like you. They may not dress like you. They may not talk like you, but I got some other sheep that I'm going to bring and I'm going to marry them right into this fold. They're going to merge right in. And I'm going to make them one fold and there's going to be one shepherd to lead all of them. I'm going to have a foal that is a great flock of sheep. Amen, amen. Well, you get down to the 26th verse of that 10th chapter. But ye believe not because you are not my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep, what? Hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Oh, Mother Louise, I think that's you underneath that hat and that, oh, my God. I wait a while before I can figure you out, but Lord have mercy. I don't care what kind of affliction season that you're going through. Somebody look at somebody and tell them it's just a season. That, it doesn't matter what season you're going through. If you just follow his voice. He's going to take you through that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Brother Harry. Yes, yes, yes. I was just thinking about that song this week, and then y'all come up here and sing it. My oh, my God. Did they ever sing that song? Yes, yes, yes. He will do what? See you through. See you through. He'll see you through any season that you're going through, no matter how difficult it is. Oh, Kathy and Bill, man, it's, it's just so good. He was out there just, oh, at the grill yesterday, the cookout. And you don't even know his story, the kind of sicknesses that he's been through. He's not even supposed to be here right now. And yet the Lord has helped him. He was exhibiting such energy yesterday. I saw him bouncing around there, boy. He was, he was doing it up. Look at God. Come on. He'll take you through any season. Mother Pettis, that's you with that mask on. Lord have mercy. Your son, we miss y'all when you're not here. But oh my God. Look at God. Taking you through. 
One of these days, she'll be free to tell you what her age is. She doesn't look her age. She's a mighty woman of God. I tell you, the Lord will take you through any season that you're going through. Sometimes you feel good. Sometimes you feel bad. But the Lord is going to see you through. All you got to do is follow his voice. How safe are you? So safe. Until the Lord Jesus says, I'm going to give to my sheep eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I hear Jesus saying, I got you. I got you. All I want you to do is keep up with me. Follow my voice. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly and hard, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus has come here. I'm going to take you places that you never thought you could go. I'm going to help you with that relationship. I'm going to help you with that problem. I'm going to take good care of you. Stand on your feet, everybody, and give the Lord a hearty praise offering in this room. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Glory be unto our God. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we're safe in your arms. And you got us claps in your hand. Be thou exalted and glorified in every one of us. Wherever people are listening, God, you are there. Reign supreme in their lives. Save to the uttermost and fill with your spirit. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together with love. And Lord, we'll love you. We'll praise you. We'll magnify you. Thank you, Lord, because one of the things that sets you apart from everybody else is that you are willing and you did lay down your life for the sheep. And so we celebrate you today on this communion Sunday. We celebrate the blood that was shed for us, that purchased our salvation, our deliverance, our healing, our freedom. Lord, we celebrate you and the blood that you shed, the price you paid for our redemption. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, have your way. Let your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your glory be revealed. Stretch your hands out towards me, everybody all over the world, wherever you're watching. Stretch your hands out towards me. We want to surrender ourselves to the Lord because we want right relationship. The religion will come with the relationship. I want right relationship with my shepherd. Lord Jesus, come on, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus here, I here I am in your presence. In your presence. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life, surrender my life to, you. to you. I open the door of my heart to you. To you. Come, in, come in, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord, Be my Lord. And, my and my Savior. Magnify yourself Magnify in, my in my life. And Lord, I'll love you. I'll praise you. I'll serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Put those hands together and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I commend these to you and to the word of your grace. You're able to build them up. Give them an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, my sons and my daughters, Satan wants to keep you in a state of unrest. He wants to keep you in a state of flux. 
but I want you to get a break. Some things are not working out as fast as you want them to work out. Some things that you wish you had hoped would work out yesterday look like it ain't going to work out even tomorrow. It just looks like. It just looks that way. But I come to tell you that the Lord that I serve, he can make something happen speedily. He can turn some things around quickly. And you will be where you had hoped to be faster than you ever thought you could be. Hallelujah! Because he is the good shepherd. I want you to go with God and God will go with you. Oh, Elder Patterson is going to come and he's going to lead us into the acceptance and the membership and all that needs to happen as we go forward with this service. But I want you to Trust the Lord with all your heart. I'm telling you, you're not by yourself. I just feel so troubled. I just feel so bothered. You ain't by yourself. There are, other, there are others who feel the same way. But he makes me lie down. Hallelujah. Come on, let's thank God for the word of God today. Come on, let's really thank God. It was so rich. So, so rich, so powerful. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for that word. So powerful. Hey, we want to thank God for each of you who are here today, and we want to um, extend an invitation both for those who want to know Jesus personally. Maybe you prayed along with Bishop, Bishop Austin. Um, man, this is your time to come. This is your time to uh, acknowledge the fact that you accept the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of your sins. For those who are with us online, we encourage you as well. Come to Jesus. Follow Jesus. Your life will never, ever be the same. And you can also join St. Luke Church of God in Christ both inside this room and online. Online, go to St. Luke Kojic, C-O-G-I-C dot com. There's a join button. And uh, we've got members all over that have joined virtually, and we appreciate that. And for those who are in the house, you say, I want to join this church. Amen. I understand some folks joined last week, and what a blessing that was and uh, uh, interaction. They were at the wonderful picnic yesterday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that a wonderful picnic yesterday? Amen. And so we're just grateful to God for uh, each of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, so. We invite you to come. Is there one? 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 We'd love for you to be a part of who we are and what God is doing in this place. Let me just speak this. I believe this is, this is true. God is doing something significant here at St. Luke, Church of God in Christ. Amen. And we're blessed. Thank God for Bishop, for Sister Austin. We're blessed to be together and moving forward, seeing transformation come to this community. Amen. Amen. So is there one? Is there one? Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part. Let's lift up a hymn before uh, Bishop Daniels comes with uh, our message. Have a seat, please. He's going to come with this, come with our uh, scripture, rather, before he comes with the scripture. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Help me say this. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's say amen for Bishop Daniels as he comes at this time. We sing that again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious flow that makes me white as snow. No other. Nothing but the blood When we go to the letter to the church at Corinth, the first letter, and look at the 11th, verse, 11th chapter and begin at the 23rd verse, it reads as follows. For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as ye oft drink of it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death until he comes. May the Lord be a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word. <clears throat> and so we uncover the tabernacle, the veil representing the flesh that is taken away. And every obstacle that is between us and the Savior. And so, Lord Jesus, here we are in your presence, identifying with you. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice that you made for us on Calvary, yes, yes. for your blood that was shed for us. You, Sanctify you, this bread and, and this cup for your honor, for your glory. Let it be healing to our bodies, our minds, and our souls. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is uh, my body. You may take the bread. Then he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. Anybody by mistake? Was everyone served who desired to be served? Thank you.
Amen. 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 All right. Well, Bishop, we thank you for your message today. Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. It's good to know that we have a good shepherd that we can rely on to, to lead us and guide us through these challenging and difficult times in life. Amen? Amen. Well, this is an opportunity for all of us to be able to give our tithes and offerings. Um, so prepare your hearts and minds to give tithes and offerings. The deacons are going to serve us. If you need change, they can make change for you. If you need an envelope, I believe the ushers have already been around with envelopes. We'll raise your hand if we missed you. If you would like, if you're in the sanctuary and you want to use your debit or credit card, um, you may begin to line up on the east window with Sister Celeste Baker on the west window with Brother Eric Taylor. And we'll begin to process your tithes and offerings electronically. Those of us who are, who are tuning in online, various ways that you can give, they're on the screen, various ways that you can give electronically um, to the ministry, amen, to give your tithes and offerings. I'm going to pray and then the deacons are going to serve you. God, we thank you for this day, Sunday, August the 7th. God, we just thank you for how good you've been to us. We thank you for sending your son Jesus, and we remember the sacrifice that he made um, by dying on the cross and then rising up again for our sins, Lord God. Father, here we are today with our tithes and our offerings. God, you bless us throughout the week to be able to go buy groceries and to, to pay our bills and just to enjoy life. But God, we come today to give to you. So here we are. God bless those that have to give and those that, not, that do not have so that the next time that they're able to give, God, and we'll endeavor here at this church to use these tithes and your offerings for your glory, for the betterment of the ministry as we continue to do kingdom work here and abroad. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. If you just raise your envelope and repeat after me, Lord, we offer unto you our gifts. Amen. The deacons are going to serve you. There's a couple of announcements. Deacon John Ott's going to come with an announcement, and then uh, Missionary Claire Brooms is going to come. Praise the Lord, saints. Hey, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Amen. We praise God for the 80th year celebration that we are still in the midst of. We thank God as part of the 80th celebration on yesterday, we had our cookout, our St. Luke cookout. It was the first time, to my recollection, since 2018 that as a family, we got together. So we're giving thanks to God for allowing us to come together. And to my knowledge, in that heat without any incident. So let's give the Lord a hand clap for allowing us to come together as a family. So from the various text messages that I've received says last night of those that have attended, they've stated that they enjoyed themselves. So I want to personally thank um, just a few people. There are so many people that have contributed, but in that extreme heat, I want to thank Brother Bill Maples, Brother Kamani, which is Sister Lolita's grandson, and I want to thank Brother Mike Wilson for standing in all of that heat, doing all of that grilling yesterday. I want to thank them. I also want to thank some of the ladies who took time out of their schedule, Sister, um, Sister Beverly, Sister Delcine, Sister Lolita, and Brother Jamal for all of the food preparation, the cooking, so I, we want to give them recognition. So again, we have some food left over from yesterday's cookout. And as you, you may or may not know, but one of the um, projects for this year is that they are looking to have a remodeling of the kitchen downstairs. So with the food that we have today, we're not asking you to pay a lot, just a few dollars, whatever you have, if you have anything after this service. You can go downstairs and there are chicken and there are rib dinners just for a small um, denomination or gift, love gift, or whatever you may have. And you can have a part of yesterday's feast um, from the cookout. God bless you. Amen. Announcements. The St. Luke Evangelistic Outreach Ministry will host its annual community and back to school summer outing. That will take place on August the 20th on a Saturday from 12 o'clock in the afternoon till four. Your school supply donations, 
financial support and prayers are much needed. Please see missionary Jennifer Boyd for further information. EFAP reminder, scholarship money, I'm sorry, scholarship money is due by the first week of August. Let us remember our young people. Our young people start going back to school next week. This message is from Dr. Rose Nichols. To our St. Luke family, we want to thank you for the wonderful gifts that you shared from your heart. This is from Father and Missionary Murray. And there's a thank you for your support as Eddie and Belinda Clark are in the process of rebuilding. God bless you. Good morning, family. The one thing that Brother John did not say is that he worked very hard, and so I want to give him a hand. <laughs> The ushers are going to pass out to you a flyer. We are continuing to celebrate our 80th year anniversary and on the fourth Sunday of this month, Bishop Edwin Walker will be our speaker in the 845 service. So we are looking forward to that. But building up to that Sunday morning, we have a concert where we don't have to work, we're gonna have a chance to sit back and listen to others. We have a choir coming all the way from Toledo, Ohio. And they are wonderfully talented singers. The ushers are going to pass out a flyer. We're going to give St. Luke members an opportunity to win a prize during that service. But you cannot win the prize if you are not here. You have to be here, and we have to know you're here in order to win the prize. The service starts at 7.30. By 7.45, we are not going to give out any more opportunities, so that means you need to be here on time. All right? August 26th, the concert, August 28th, 8.45 service. Bless you. Hey, Amen. All right, we're bringing back our bishop at this time. And you heard the announcement about EFAP, where young people are going back to college. Um, so excited. I got news yesterday that uh, Brother Marquise Burks, who's a football player down at Auburn University, he graduated yesterday. Uh, so you may have, some of you may have seen the pictures. I'm just excited. I saw the pictures. I'm like, that brother graduated. He's a real graduate. Um, he's got another year of eligibility for the football team, so he's staying down there. But shout out to Sister Deja. Uh, she's headed out to North Carolina A&T later this month. Um, and some of our other young people are going to be headed out to college. So see, please see Dr. Rosemary Nichols if you haven't submitted your EFAP scholarship money so that we can make sure that our young people have what they need when they go back to campus. Amen? All right. Our bishop is coming at this time. Well, God bless you. And I also want to thank God. Uh, <clears throat> Brother John, Deacon John Ott, and all those who worked with him for that uh, cookout on yesterday. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've got a christening to do, and I'm going to ask uh, those of you who have a baby to be christened to please come forward at this time. Amen. Uh, Mother Woods, always good to see you. Tell, tell Mother Clayton that we're praying for her. Yes, daughter. All right. And uh, if you have a baby to be christened, you must come at this time. Uh, those of you who are going to be going to school, um, this might be your last Sunday here in person. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, because there's more than one. I know, I know of one, but there may be more than one who's going back to school, that we can pray collectively at the end of this service. So in our closing prayer, 
our closing prayer. Um, we want it to be for the students going to college, going to high school, going back to school. Amen? Already. So we have this dear child who, uh, uh, he's got a few months on him. Uh, he's so bright eyed, I don't know if you can turn him. I don't know if you can hand him to me backwards. But that's how we normally do it. He has a nice little smile on his face. Oh, take his picture right there. Yeah. I think he likes what he sees. Well, maybe you, need to, you might need to, uh, uh, oh, you, you're here? Let's see. Let's see if he'll come to me. You think he'll come to me? Hey. Come on. Come on. What's his name? Noah. Noah. Hey, Noah. All right. Beautiful. Noah, so good to see you. See Noah, look, look at all this. Look at it. Look at that. Wave at him. See? Hi, Noah. God, we love you. Want well, to thank you for Noah, for bringing him into this world. It is you, God, who gave him life. And God, he may become a preacher. He is, he's handling my mic. God, have your way. Magnify yourself in this life. Let them grow up loving you and fearing you. Bless the parents of this child, that they will live exemplary lives, that this child can follow their example and do those things that are right and pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and we'll love you and praise you and magnify you forever. Thank you, Lord, for Noah. Norwood, is that right? Amen. God bless you. What a wonderful child, so bright-eyed. And, okay. Now, who's going to be godparents? Anybody going to be God? Good enough. That's okay. All right, you got him? Oh, he wants to stay with me, huh? <laughs> Here we go. We're going to anoint you, Noah. All right. Anoint you with all your, all your precious child. God yes, bless God. him. He's your property from bless this day Lord. forward. Yes, Be thou exalted yes, and glorified God. in the name of the Jesus. Name of All right. Why don't, why don't you uh, tell me who these wonderful people are, uh, Simone? Tell me who these wonderful people are. That's my brother. That's your mother. All right. <laughs> it's my, my mother and my oldest daughter. All right. Hey, <laughs> bless you. Okay. Quick announcement. Yeah. I want people to. I want you all to help me celebrate that my grandson is a cancer survivor. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Hey, wait a minute now. Hey, Pop. You Pop? Nathan? Hey, Nathan. Good to see you, man. God bless you, and God be with you, and God keep you. Amen. Amen. Auntie, oh, oh she, she didn't see you back there. All right, Auntie. God bless you. How wonderful, how wonderful. All right. Just keep in mind, you'll, you'll get a, a reminder next Sunday, but a week from tomorrow will be our pre-convocation assembly. Uh, and we're going to do communion, baptism, all of it on a Monday night. That is August the 15th. So keep that in mind uh, because I'm going to want St. Luke to be here in a big way as we have a pre-convocation assembly. And we're inviting people from over 20 different churches to come together. So this is going to be a busy month with a guest choir coming in from Toledo, Ohio, and, and Bishop Edward Walker, the preaching machine all over the nation, he's known. And he's coming here for the fourth Sunday. I tell you, we're just going to be so blessed uh, as we are continuing to celebrate our 80th year uh, uh, celebration. Folks, that's no small feat. Uh, God has blessed us to stay together and stay in business for 80 years. 80 years. That is a blessing. Uh, some of my favorite places have gone out of business. I couldn't believe that Ruth Chris is no longer around. Lord have mercy. Uh, gone. 
and, and, and so, so many other, other places. Uh, uh, I'm just talking about the one that I go to over on Dearborn, okay? They may have other locations. They have other locations in other states. I've been to Ruth Chris in different places. I'm talking about the one over on Dearborn. Board it up, go on. All right. So, uh, uh, huh? Prime Rib. Yeah, they gone too. Laurie's, oh, Lord. I don't know how Grand Lux stayed in business so long. But, uh, but they ain't been in business 80 years. I'm telling you, 80 years is a long time. Uh, how many of y'all been married for 80 years? See what I'm talking about? Yeah. To be together for 80 years is a wonderful thing. And God has blessed us. And so we give the Lord all the honor, the glory, and the praise. All right. I want to call all the students together. I want to uh, anoint you with oil. I want to pray with you, pray for you right now in our closing prayer. We're at the end of this service. And if there are some students who are out there uh, online and you're watching, I will remember you in this closing prayer also. Would you come forward right now? Those students who are going to school, back to school, you may come at this time. I can't believe my little girl, my little girl going to college. Oh my goodness. Bless you. Little girl no more, right? All right. She's a, has grown up and become a woman, and now she's going to North Carolina for a college. A lot more company. Oh, this tall, handsome guy. Whoa. Is this your last year? You'll be a senior this year. Oh. And who are these wonderful people coming? Hey, welcome. Going to school? Good. All right. Oh, you got a lot of company. Looked like they had to make up their mind whether they were going or not. <laughs> You going to school? I thought I thought you were out of school. What did she say? What what did she say? Somebody tell me what she said. She's going for her master's degree. Wow. Which school are you gonna go to? You're already at Roosevelt University going for her master's. So proud of you. So proud of you. God bless you. You know, I kind of like the Kelly family. Just kind of like y'all. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Since you were first on my list, I'm going to pray for you first, okay? And everybody else got to follow you. That's all. Now, that means that you're going to be a role model for all these younger ones so that when you get to school, you're not going to lose your head and forget who your shepherd is. Amen. All right. Good. Well, God, we love you. and want to thank you for this opportunity. This opportunity to bless this next generation. They're going to represent you on campus, wherever they are. They're going to represent you. Magnify yourself in their lives. Open up their minds, their understanding. Let them comprehend the information that's being shared with them. Let them excel and do well. Let them get along well with their peers. Protect them and shield them from every evil element that's out to destroy. You take full charge of their lives and let them be a role model to the rest of the students. The light of the world the salt of the earth, and a mirror for Christ. And we'll love you, we'll praise you, magnify you forever. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.
Thank God. Oh, God. Thank you, God. Have your way in this vessel, Jesus. And use us to your glory. In the name of Jesus. Love you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you so much. Come. In the name of Jesus. Bless you. Bless our daughter. Be exalted, oh God. Glorified in the name of Jesus. Let it be so. Amen. Oh God, magnify yourself in this vessel. You be glorified in the name of Jesus. Come, son. Our son. Bless him, Jesus. Be exalted and glorified. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our daughter, going for her masters, be exalted and glorified in this life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Come on, let's praise God for me. God be with you. You can go back to your places now. Thank you so much. Now, Lord, I commend these to you, to the word of your grace. You're able to build them up, give them an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I ask that you keep us now in the center of your will until we meet again. Now, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest rule of the Bible both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Well, get your rest, sir. We love you. All right.